we need to move on to the, the third uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Gary Orr. Uh, Gary is chairperson of the International Monitoring Control and Surveillance Network, or IMCS in short. Uh, his full-time work is Director Compliance at the Ministry for Primary Industry, New Zealand. And his work on the enforcement almost two decades. Some of you may not born when he started working as the enforcement officers. And he was also a member of the board of the Interpol Fishery Crime Working Group for many years. Today, Gary will, will present uh, the presentation entitled A Viable Tool and Future Activity for MCS Implementation. Gary, please share your, your screen. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you to CIFTEC for the opportunity to present to you on the International Monitoring Control and Surveillance Network, or IMCS Network, as we're more commonly known. Our mission is to promote and facilitate cooperation and coordination among network members through information exchange, capacity development and collaboration. We do this to achieve improved effectiveness and efficiency of MCS activities to prevent, deter and eliminate IEU fishing and related fisheries activities at local, regional and international levels. Our vision is to be recognised as the principal point of contact, facilitator and foremost authority on all issues relating to MCS when it comes to IEU fishing at local, regional and international levels. We do this by coordinating and encouraging international cooperation on MCS and raising awareness of MCS issues, facilitating increased information exchanges and collaborative MCS activities among members. We also assist in strengthening the human and technical capacity of members to implement and maintain effective and efficient MCS schemes. Since the end of the last century, there's been a global increase in spread of IEU fishing. In 2001, consultations on IEU fishing resulted in the adoption of the International Plan of Action to prevent, deter and eliminate IEU fishing. This has guided the international efforts to combat IEU fishing ever since. In January 2000, Australia, Chile, the European Union, Peru and the United States agreed to organise and establish an international network for coordination of fisheries enforcement. An executive committee was established with support from the Food and Agriculture Organisation of the United Nations and an invitation was issued to all interested states and entities to participate in a January 2001 meeting where the International MCS Network was officially established. The establishment of the network provided a global platform that had never existed before for fisheries law enforcement officers and MCS professionals to share information and experiences on suspected IEU fishing activities and to join forces in enforcing fisheries legislation. Identifying and pursuing IEU activities requires resources and capabilities that are often beyond the reach of any individual nation. Only through cooperation among the enforcement authorities of coastal, flag, port and market states can the gaps in information be filled and corroborated with data from inspection or surveillance from other states. In terms of the network, executive oversight and management is provided by the executive committee, led by an elected chair and one vice chair. We're supported by a full-time executive director, who is Mark Young. Mark is supported by Amy Coombs as a network coordinator. 
In 2009, global IEU fishing activities were estimated to cause losses in the range of 20, uh, 10 to 23 billion US dollars annually. This estimation is currently under a review, taking into account progress in several areas due to the efforts of the international community in combating IEU fishing. The gradual strengthening of the network, which is made up of dedicated MCS practitioners who know each other personally, has facilitated some of these international efforts and cooperation. This includes, but is not limited to, exchange of information and best practice, mutual technical and logistics support, and joint activities. However, despite the progress made over the last 20 years, there is still a long way to go in combating IEU activities in all parts of the world. A key tool for future international efforts to combat IEU has been mentioned by the previous speakers, and that's the FAO Port State Measures Agreement. I understand to date 66 parties have ratified the agreement and many more are expected to join and or adopt the PSMA. Full implementation of the measures set forth in the PSMA will require the support of the international community. The network will contribute to this by promoting exchange of MCS activity between the countries involved. The IMCS network is an informal arrangement of member states, regional fisheries management organisations and the European Union. It encourages participation from fisheries inspectors, investigators, attorneys, foreign service officers, forensic specialists and others who are charged with fisheries related MCS and who respond to IEU activities. Although membership is listed to the three, uh, limited to the three categories listed, the, networks, the network works closely with other intergovernmental organisations such as the FAO, and they are considered important partners. In order to increase the effectiveness and efficiency of MCS, the network facilitates cooperation and information sharing among all member states and organisations, as well as between network members and third parties. This is principally achieved through the GFETW, which I'll talk more about shortly. The IMCS network currently comprises 67 member countries, two RFMOs and the European Union. Six of the 11 members of ASEAN and CEFDEC are also members. We encourage those that are not currently members of the IMCS network to consider becoming a member and taking advantage of the resources the network has to offer. Membership is voluntary and free of charge. Our communication strategy aims to increase knowledge, publication and dissemination of the network's achievements and to encourage members to use the network for cooperation and exchange of information with other members. The primary method used by the network to raise awareness and exchange of information is the network website and you'll see the link on the presentation. A new version of the website will be introduced in September of this year. A members only website portal workspace will be available for sharing of documents, member point of contact lists and other tools, resources and members only communications. The network website also helps to raise awareness among the public about the negative impact of IEU fishing and of international MCS issues. The IMCS network represents a global source of MCS expertise and where possible supports the provision of assistance in responding to suspected IEU incidents or for strengthening capacities to apply fisheries legislation by international, regional or national training activities. The network also coordinates with other intergovernmental organisations and initiatives to combat IEU fishing such as the capacity building project of Interpol's Fisheries Crime Working Group and the Emerging Sea Scout Initiative. The US Maritime Security and Fisheries Enforcement Act became law on December 20 last year. Part two of that act called for the establishment of a collaborative interagency working group to strengthen maritime security and combat IEU fishing. Among other activities of that group, are to support the efforts of the IMCS network and Interpol to combat IEU fishing by building fisheries enforcement capacity 
and strengthening collaboration between governments. So it was very nice to be recognised at that level. In 2005, a Global Fisheries Enforcement Training Workshop, or GFETW, was convened for the first time in Malaysia. That was followed by further workshops in Norway, Mozambique, Costa Rica, New Zealand, and Thailand in February of last year. The GFETW is held every two years and is the only international conference focused on operational level in MCS practitioners. It provides members and other participants opportunities to have in-depth discussions and establish relationships with their counterparts in organisations and countries from outside of their regions. It has its own website, which is now on the screen in front of you. It aims to bring together MCS practitioners and experts from related fields from across the world to discuss and exchange best practice lessons learned, and information on current activities at national, regional, and global levels. Uh, as I said before, the GFETW is the only international conference for fisheries compliance and enforcement officers where they can meet their counterparts and other MCS practitioners from around the world, and where they can openly discuss issues and problems related to their work. For each GFETW, the network strives for regionally balanced participation of MCS practitioners, including from developing countries. The next GFETW was planned for next year in Canada. However, the global uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and restrictions on global travel have caused the network to consider holding this in-person workshop in 2022 instead. We are currently exploring the possibility of a virtual workshop in 2021. In 2012, the network launched a new initiative, the Stop IEU Fishing Award Contest, which recognises MCS innovations being used in both small and large scale fisheries that demonstrate creativity, success and tangible solutions which prevent and deter IEU fishing. Since then, the three contests have generated considerable interest from all over the world, and the announcements of winners and platforms they are given to deliver presentations about their projects at the GFETW has raised the awareness about the challenges posed by IEU fishing in its diverse forms. Winners to date have been Timor-Leste, Tanzania, and the Pacific Island Forum Fisheries Agency. In 2018, the network established a register of vetted MCS experts, which was intended to be a tool for network members organising trainings and other capacity building activities. Vetted MCS experts can be called in response to any requests for expertise in MCS matters. Current plans are to enhance the register of vetted experts, expanding it to include regional experts who can communicate in a variety of languages. In addition, the list, which has consisted mainly of retired fisheries MCS experts, will also consider including MCS practitioners currently employed by fisheries enforcement authorities. The register provides a pool of highly qualified independent MCS experts that the network supports to participate in capacity building projects and trainings related to fisheries MCS undertaken by national authorities and international institutions. These experts and the network executive director have also helped develop specific and general MCS training materials and have assisted members with their interests in developing strategic risk assessments associated with uh, IEU fishing in their waters. Network members and international organisations can contact us for further information about training support. Also, the network considers applications from MCS experts who wish to become part of the register of vetted experts on a rolling basis. The network also coordinates requests and offers for transfers of MCS equipment. The exchange of inspection equipment fosters joint efforts, cooperation and collaboration between, on one side, authorities who require MCS equipment but don't have sufficient funding 
to acquire new equipment. And on the other side, authorities who are replacing equipment, which is reusable. When delivering training in Africa, MCS experts noted an almost complete lack of basic inspection equipment, such as gauges, to measure mess size in the two countries they were working with. In one of those countries, a single mesh gauge was shared among an entire region. The IMCS network addressed this problem by arranging for mesh gauges that were no longer in use in the Netherlands to be shipped to the two countries. The network made similar arrangements to recycle mesh gauges no longer in use by Ireland's Sea Fisheries Protection Board, matching up equipment with recipients in four other African nations. More recently, the Australian Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation, or CISRO, became an, an official observer to the network. The network will be collaborating with CISRO to provide MCS-specific needs, such as data analysis training to staff, and assisting in effectively implementing MCS software on computing infrastructure. CISRO has two types of hydrophone units available for loan to interested network members for up to a year of operational use. Members need only cover the cost of shipping the hydrophones, but these costs may be covered by the IMCS network itself as one of the network's means of supporting its members. The unit sits at depth and sends an antenna to the surface to communicate with an Iridium satellite and push notifications to email, mobile phones or other receivers at low cost. Training and personalised software tools will soon be available for users to analyse their own data. The question was posed uh, before this meeting about what can we do about IEU and a couple of the previous speakers have spoken about sharing of information resources. Um, that's key. In the Pacific, uh, we have what is known as the NUA Treaty Subsidiary Agreement and that allows for us to have uh, sea rider agreements with other nations and even more importantly it allows us to enforce the laws of a neighbouring country. In New Zealand's case uh, we have our EEZ extending far to the north uh, such that it's about a two-day steam for one of our naval vessels to get to the northern extremity. Tonga is our nearest neighbour up there, it is actually more easy for Tonga to patrol our northern EEZ extremity than it is ours. Under the Nui Treaty subsidiary agreement, they are empowered to come into our EEZ and enforce New Zealand fisheries legislation. So that's a, a very good way of regional partners collaborating to ensure that uh, IEU fishing is addressed even if you can't get there yourself. We've also seen a move towards working more closely with NGOs who in some instances have a, a far greater resource network both in terms of vessels and intelligence networks than many countries around the world. Um, as part of the Interpol Fisheries Crime Working Group, we did a six year operation in relation to the Southern Ocean IEU fishing fleet in Kamla waters. And we work very closely with Sea Shepherd, uh, which if you'd asked me 10 years ago as a law enforcement person whether I'd be working that closely with an organisation like Sea Shepherd, I would have shaken my head in disbelief. But they have been a very key partner for us and we've developed a very good relationship going forward. The other thing I would say is that the vessels are the visible part of the IEU activity and it's very easy to uh, deal with those. More importantly, you need to follow the money, you need to follow the product, you need to identify the movements of crew. Through all of those things, the, the provisioning of the vessel, the crew movements in and out of a port, you can then start to track who's coordinating that, who's paying for that, and who benefits, more importantly. If you go to the source and identify the benef beneficial owners of IEU fishing, you then start to address the problem uh, with that type of activity. In closing, uh, can I say that if you have any questions regarding the IMCS network, I would encourage you to contact their executive director, Mark Young, 
at the uh, email address shown on the screen. I want to thank you all for your attention and once again thank the Chief Dec Sec Secretariat for the opportunity to talk with you today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, your presentation is uh, very informative and uh, you also provide the background of uh, international MCS network and as well as the vision, mission of uh, network. I, I, I found that the Stop Fitching Award contest is very constructive. And, and very excellent campaign. And uh, we do have the question, the few questions to you. Uh, the first question I would like to ask for my colleagues that can you elaborate more on the mothership training? What kind of the training course? Uh, this is the first question. In terms of training, the, the key for that is uh, if there is a training need, uh, the country concerned or the, the agency concerned reaches out to us through our executive director, identifies the need. We then look to match one of our registered MCS experts with that need and provide the training. So um, as I said before, one of the, the things we've done recently is the risk assessment. Uh, with a uh, South American country, they had never done a risk assessment before. And so we were able to link them in with uh, some uh, experts in developing that type of tool, provide them some templates, step them through the process. They now have a number of people within that agency that can do risk assessments and share that amongst their regional group. Uh, so. You, you, you don't just go in and, and teach one person in one country and then walk away. You teach that person to enable them to teach others in, in their neighbouring countries. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And, and one more question may, may not be related with I, IMCS, but uh, the question focused on the, the New Zealand fishery. Uh, this is relating with the VMS system that uh, may not need to install in all vessels of uh, New Zealand, but they have a certain criteria to select the vessels that are needed to install VMS on board. Do you have any example on, on this, sir? Yes, um, we have about 1,100 registered commercial fishing vessels uh, in New Zealand. Until recently, only the deep water vessels, uh, about 100 of those vessels, uh, were on our vessel monitoring system. So we had a huge information gap in relation to the other 1,000 vessels as to where they went every day. We had to rely on their manual uh, catch reporting forms to show positions of where their activity was. And uh, I'm a cynical law enforcement person and I didn't always trust the, the accuracy or the honesty of that reporting. Uh, last year, New Zealand introduced uh, global positional reporting for all of our commercial fleet. And we also at the same time introduced electronic catch reporting. So not only can we see where the vessel is in near real time, we can also see what they're catching. So that allows us then to uh, sort of look at a vessel and say, if you're fishing in this area at this time of year, with this type of gear at this depth, this is the catch mix we would expect to see for your vessel. Uh, you should see 12 or 15 different species in your net. You're only reporting five. That's an alert for us because that means that there's something not, there might be discarding going on. We're in the process too of rolling out cameras uh, throughout our vessel fleet and that's the, the third stage of increasing our uh, monitoring uh, capability at sea. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We, uh, we almost run out of the, the time for the third presentation, but I think one of the questions is quite interesting on the community-based report system of the Timor-Leste. Uh, that may help support country in this region that a lot of small-scale fishing. Can you provide a brief information on, on this system that uh, won uh, the, the award, sir? <laughs> I would love to do so, but I'm sorry I don't have the detail with me. Um, uh -huh. One of the things I would say with the stop 
IEU Fishing Award is that, and I saw a comment from uh, Matthew Camilleri before about the focus always seems to be on the I part of IEU rather than the unreported and unregulated. Um, the, the two out of the three uh, awards so far have been for the unregulated and unreported type of activity. The Tanzanian one related to fishing in Lake Tanzania uh, and uh, Timor Leste Day was again about unreported uh, and unregulated. So uh, I, I agree with Matthew that there needs to be more emphasis on the two U's rather than the I. There's only a small proportion of global fishing activity uh, that fits into that illegal category. The biggest impact on sustainability for fisheries is in the unregulated and unreported area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we we have one more question from our colleagues. Um, in case of Timor Leste, uh, how can we reverberate? Do you have any suggestion? I, I am more than happy to provide the details of the um, presentation information to CFDEC for sharing with uh, those on on the call. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry for our, our audience, we run out of time, so we need to to move to the, the, the last uh, speaker. Thank you very much, Gary.